All right, we're going with the fact that I didn't change it before. All right, boxes of bills number 10. This is a set of irons, Tiger Wood irons, going to Nebraska. Go Big Red. <laughs> Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. Jim McCleary here, and this is the McGolf Channel where we talk about golf club repairs, golf club reviews, and golf club fittings. All so your scores can go low. If you would, like, subscribe, hit that stuff across the bottom. That way more of this gets out to the YouTube universe. Also, we have a live stream. It's on Mondays at 17.30, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and we talk about the same stuff. Very good question and answer session. It's called What's My Drawers Golf Talk, and uh, we go one-on-one. -on -one. We talk from, with people from around the world. You'll enjoy it, so join us. So what am I doing with some Tiger Wood irons? Well, a now a customer of McGolf from Nebraska in Omaha, go Big Red. That's where I was born. Once a Husker, always a Husker sent me some clubs and uh, as you can see the tiger wood irons are blades right from the one of the greatest players on the planet why not right however what he wants me to put in were some lab or not lab what he wanted me to put in were some la golf shafts now this one went back and forth because there are several different kinds of la golf shafts uh, these are the a series yeah, the A series. And they don't look any different than the other series, but there's a very, very lightweight, you won't be able to see it, uh, code that's registered to tell you what kind that it is. Now, uh, we ran into a bit of a struggle with these in that when I was measuring them, because we measure everything, heads, shafts, grips, everything, to make sure that there's some level of uniformity. And in the heads, they were very uniform. In the grips, they were very uniform. And in the shafts, they were extraordinarily uniform. However, they were light, right? They have a spec. I finally found the specs. The company was kind enough to send them to me. And it was out of spec by two grams in the low. So that was problematic because the customer asked for a particular swing weight. So I called him, or we talked about it even on the last live stream, and he said it was okay. So now here we go. So what did I do with these things? I reamed them out in order to accept the shafts. And then we frequency matched them because they all want to go logo down. So none of the spine and flow stuff. And we installed some BB and F ferrules again. Now this, again, this set of uh, shaft or heads had a shoulder in it. So we had to cut another set of collared ferrules to put in there to a, uh, absorb that space so that we didn't have a wiggle. Now it was already tied in there, but this is just one way to prevent from creating a shear point. Now I've shown you this one before, however, it came up with a bit of a new, new way of getting rid of the excess that sticks out above the head. And instead of using my one by 42 sanding belt, I used my one by 42 ferrule belt. And it's a, basically a ferrule. It just dawned on me today. And we put it up against there and it hacks off the remaining part of that ferrule and doesn't take any part of the golf club head with us. So discovered something new. Now that was all nice and dandy, but what the reason why I'm telling you about this is this is a, a golf clubs explained in the, well, not the final, but in the component portion of it. We did the heads, we did shafts. This is grips. Okay. These are grips. Grips are the connection to the golf club. They're what gives you a level of confidence, a, a level of tack, a level of grip, a level, whatever you want to call it, that, be able to, that you'll be able to swing the golf club correctly or well for that matter, right? And in the beginning, golf club grips were pieces of leather that were literally wrapped around the shaft and, and different overlaps to give different sizes and truly made out of leather. And they were tacked onto the wooden shafts put some uh, caps on the end of it, or even uh, wound them up with pitch and then on the bottom as well. And it's since graduated to a slip-on grip that was actually created in Northern Ohio. And it has 
morphed into a, an industry of its own. So there are several types of grips out there now. And I just want to give you kind of a, a smattering of them. So everybody understands the slide on grip, all right? This happens to be an, an MCC, not a plus four, but just an MCC where you have cord and you have a rubber uh, texture. Now, there are what you would call a corded and a non-corded grip. A, a non-corded grip would be something that looks like that. It's just pure rubber with a different texture. A full cord grip would have this running the entire length of the particular grip. So there's some of that. So this would be a half cord grip. These, that was Golf Pride, these are star grips and these are their pro models and they come in a variety of colors and they have a different shape that is of the previous manufacturer. Uh, then you can get into a synthetic grip. And synthetic grips are the most popular known as the wind. This just happens to be a LT, which is a low taper. If you look at the difference between this one and this one, this goes really wide and gets pretty small, where this one stays pretty wide all the way down. And that is a very, very popular shape right now, and that's where we do a lot of those. Now you saw the, you saw the synthetic grip now, and those are of standard sizes, and we'll get to sizing here in a little bit. And then we have the extra large grips. Now these have come onto the scene in uh, the last couple of years where the extra, extra, extra large grips that are beyond what the norm would be, that these have taken a foothold and a lot of people like these as well. Now, that's a full swing grip. There are also putter grips. Putter grips, again, in the more traditional style and they have different shapes, which you'll be able to tell by looking down at this end. And a putter grip is defined by a flat. If you go into the rules of golf, they talk about where the grip has to be symmetrical, except for the putter grip, where you can have a flat where your thumbs would rest because of the way that you hold that particular club. Now, those have morphed as well, and the ever-popular Super Stroke Again, it is round, it's just gotten a different shape, and then it also has a flat on the top, and there's several styles from them. You also have Jumbo Max, this is their variety of the same thing. And then you have um, another, we'll call it Upstart Grip Company, and that's the Garson. And this is just as one, is called the Ultimate, and this has a flat with some sides on it, and then but it leads into a round shape. So, you can hold this in a variety of ways for all the new putter grips that are out there. What I mean by putter grips, I mean putter styles of putting. Okay, so that's just to give you an idea. So those are the different si or the different styles of grips, right? Different styles of grips. They all slide on. Now, the application of how they slide on, that is going to be at the end. But the last part is sizing. Now, I've showed you in several, several, several other videos about sizing. Number one, the comfort as it sits in your hands is going to be paramount, whether it strategically fits you or not. All right, what we're looking for here is when you put it on the back of your hand that this finger here touches or just barely doesn't touch the, the pad of your hand. However, if you want to take it a step further, you also want to use this one and measure that hand as well. So you're measuring both hands, not just the back hand. All right, so that will get you. Now, the size that you depend on is whether or not you hold it here in the fingers, a little bit deeper here, or really deep into the hands. Now, the, the, more, that, the more that you hold them into the fingers, the smaller the grip will tend to be. The deeper it gets into the hands, the bigger the grip can be, okay? Now there's three distinct grip styles. There is the interlocking, there is the overlapping, and then there is the 10 fingered. Those can give you different sizings as well. What I mean by that is the interlocking and the overlapping tend to gravitate towards the same types of sizes where it's in your hands. However, the 10 finger grip, uh, you can normally will need a bigger grip for that one because it sets a little deeper in your hand. 
for most people. There's a lot of most and sorters and couldas in this because there's just so many different ways to hold this grip. Okay, so we got that. Got to put that away. So the, the last thing we want to know about this one is how they wear. All right, synthetics are softer, so they will tend to wear more. Then comes the rubber grip, and then comes the corded grip. Why is that? Well, it's softer, less soft, and not the softest. That makes sense? There's less stuff in it, so the softest one will wear first, the rubber is the norm, and then the corded grip, because there's more stuff in it, will go last. All right, now as far as sizing, when you're going to put these things on, you need to know two things in order to address the size. Number one is the core size, the inside of this guy, uh, the core size of the grip, and the butt diameter of the shaft. All right, so let's talk about this one. So this is, this is a 600, 600 core. If it is put onto a 600, a 600 butt shaft, then this will be a men's standard because that's what this is for. All right, if it is put onto, if it is a 600 core put onto a 610 butt, is going to be slightly larger, okay, slightly larger. If it goes the other way and it's put onto a smaller shaft, it will be slightly smaller, all right? Now, there's gonna be other, other situations here. If you have a 610, because there are those out there, right? 610 butt with a 610 core, it will still end up being a men's standard. Same thing for a, fi a 580 core and a 580 shaft. It'll always still be men's standard. Or in ladies' grips, if it is a 560 and it goes on to a 560, then it'll be a ladies' standard. Okay, now if you take this 560 and you put it onto a 580, it'll be slightly bigger. All right, and that by that point too. Now this, the, they change in size from, if you look at them in fractions, quarter or eighth inch, uh, sixteenth of an inch, thirty second of an inch. And that's the that's how they change. Now you can always add tape to make them bigger. And that's all and that's what we're getting ready to show you right now. So where I have two more of these clubs to grip and I wanted to show you the the reason why that I picked this is because we have to put four layers of tape on it and I wanted to show you the intricacies of putting the tape on. So let me move you. All right, so we have our, our club in the vise, and it doesn't have to be super duper tight, it just has to hold it. Now the first thing I like to do is mark it. So there is a series of white lines right here that will be the grip cap. And then I go to the other series of white lines. That way, when we go to place the tape, we never go beyond that. Now, what we're gonna do is build up tape. Build up tape can be several different things. I like using the craft paper, which is this brown craft paper, because it's thick enough and it actually doesn't take nearly as many wraps in order to get to where I need to be. All right. And there we go. So what we're going to be doing is uh, when we go to put these four layers on, we don't want to put them all in the same way because then it will create a rib. Unless, of course, you wanted to create the rib, but in this case, we're not. So what do we do is we get the first piece of tape on there, and we make sure that it is wrinkle-free by, as you saw, rubbing it back and forth to ensure that the ends of the tape meet. And then on the first, well, in all of them, I guess, I fold them over nice and tight on the top. Now we're using the grip as kind of a guide on how much to pull off. And now on this time, instead of putting the tape on the starting at the top, we'll start it at the bottom. Now it's a lot easier to fold it over, as you can see. And we'll fold it over. Now, do you necessarily have to go all the way in? Could you stop at the very end here? Yeah, the answer to that is very much yes. Uh, that's just a preference. All 
Now what you also could do, and I'll show you on the last one, is that you could start them off in four different quadrants. There we go. Now this is hanging over a little more than I like, so we're going to cut it off with the blade. There we go. And then what we do on the last one is the grip tape. I always get a little extra and we put it underneath. Again, make sure no wrinkles because the wrinkles will translate into the grip and it'd be a feel thing. And there we go. And so that's what we got. Now for the next one. All right, same, same thing. We're going to use the quadrant method. All right, so the first one will be on top. The re easiest one is when you go to the, go to press it down, you can see the shaft pull through and you can understand where you're at in relationship to the tape, making sure that it's on there in parallel fashion. All right, there's the first one. Now the next one will be, well, it's just for the, for you guys will be over here and we'll start it like that. There we go, got it all f flat. Get the end taken down, that's two. This one we'll start with this side. See that wasn't exactly straight. Okay. Now what that does by doing it like this, it doesn't allow any of these seams, any of these seams to gather in one spot, so it transmits a basically a funky feel. All right, and the last one. Underneath. And there we go. Now you saw me fold it over. The other way of closing the end is by a twist, and that make, pulls it in there tight. And all you have to do is pull down. All right, so we got them all done. Now it's to install them. So let me get my tray. Now what I've done is I've separated all the grips by weight at the lightest for the top and the heaviest at the bottom. Normally there's only about a, a grams difference. So is that a big deal? No, it's just one more level of precision. All right, we get it in there, get it nice and lubricated. I get down through here. Now this is a little bit different than your normal install with all this tape. Get it running through the mouth, push it down on there. And then, oh, we got to go logo down. <laughs> Forgot all about that one. There we go. And that's the reason why you work quick. All right, let me line it real quick. Made it just in time. <laughs> one more. This time we'll be ready with it being logo down. Now you don't have to fill the grip all the way up, about half, half is more than enough. But you never, you know, the old saying is you can never use too much solvent. Check it in line with that. I pound it on the ground to seat it, and then I'm looking for it as a particular pattern. And then the last part, which I didn't do on the first one, is I tend to wipe it off so all the other gunk comes off of it. So we'll take that. And if you don't believe me, that's what comes off of it. All right, so there's grips. All righty, so that was grips in a nutshell. Again, to remember that they are the contact to the club to give you confidence. They do come in various sizes, shapes, colors, 
textures, materials, and they come in various sizes so they can fit the various sized hands. I just had a gentleman in here that took the biggest grip that Jumbo Max makes, which to me is like grabbing the wrong end of a baseball bat, but it fit him just fine. So that's what we were looking for. So just like there's different people, there's different grips out there, different styles for different environments, for different types of preferences, for different clubs, you name it, they've got it. So you just make sure you get the right kind, the right size, showing you the easy way to put it on. And that way, when you go to grab your club, you're able to make a good swing and your scores go low, right? So if you got any questions, put them in the show notes below. As always, join us on the live stream, Mondays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And again, let's see your scores go low.